Hi you guys, welcome back. Today we're not in my garden, but we are in Atlanta. And what I like to do when I'm in the different cities is I go to the different garden centers and I see what they have available that's different from what the nurseries carry in the St. Louis region. I also like to take this time as well to go to the various garden centers to see what type of containers they have. Now, as I stress this all the time, if you guys want a beautiful, luxurious container collection, you have to get out of those big box stores and you have to see what they have at the local nurseries because one nursery might carry something that your nursery might not carry. They might have a contract with one container brand that they don't have maybe in your local region. So what I wanna do is I wanna head out and I wanna start to see what's in the local nurseries. Hopefully we can get through the Atlanta traffic. If not, you guys, then this trip just might be a no-go for us at the local garden centers. Before we go, I definitely want to show you guys the view because it's absolutely amazing. You guys, look at this. Isn't that just beautiful? The city skyline of Atlanta is just gorgeous. And it's even... I should have took some footage of what it looks like at night because you guys, it is gorgeous. Look at that. And it just stretches as far as the eye can see. Thank you. All right, y'all. Let's get it started. Let's get it started. Yeah. Safety first. Whew. Okay, y'all. I'm out of that mask, baby. I'm out of that mask. All right, y'all. Well, it looks like the traffic is going pretty good. It's not too bad. Normally, it's a lot thicker around this time. But it seems like we might be able to get everything, um, get to where we need to be. Look at the pots and see what pots they have available. They have anything different than what we have at home. Those are the things that I grab. Wait a minute, I see some pots straight over there. Let's go. All right, so these are not bad. $39.50 for terracotta. Made it back from the garden centers. Because of the traffic, we were not able to make it to as many garden centers that I wanted to go to. So we ended up stopping into a big box store and I wanted to look at the plant inventory to see what type of plants they had available that was different from the plants that we had in the St. Louis region. Now, the middle of a heat wave in St. Louis. You guys, we've had triple digit temperatures and I know all of my plant inventory that I have for future videos is destroyed. So I'm gonna have to start from bare one, scratch one. So hopefully, I mean, it's gonna definitely be on my mind as I ride back in. The next time we greet each other, I'll be in my garden. Let's head back. Continue on Northside Parkway, Northwest for two miles.
we made it back home and just as I suspected, everything is completely dried out and we'll move to the back. But the first thing that I noticed is that the leaves on my hydrangeas are drooping over. I can see where they have been burnt and everything. But the thing of it is, one thing to keep in mind, when you guys are watering your hydrangeas, make sure if they're drooping during the hot part of the daytime, you want to just let them suffer through. Whatever is going to burn off will burn off. So with the hydrangea, if it starts to notice that it's not getting enough water, what it will do is it will kill off the hydrangea leaves on the inner part. So if you guys see that the inner leaves of your hydrangea are actually dropping, don't worry about it. But what I'm going to do is because our hoses are put away in the front yard and I need to be able to move through each one of these areas real quickly, let me show you guys how we're going to water these front containers. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus only on the ones in the containers first. Nope, I haven't lost it and guess what? I'm going to give them two buckets of water a piece. So let's go ahead, let's fill this up a second time. We're gonna hit this one, then we're gonna hit the one on the end. At the end of winter, early spring, you guys, I went in, I trimmed them very deep because they had a few different problems going on. One, because my hydrangeas are in the front walkway, I trimmed my bobo hydrangeas to where they were almost non-existent. And the same thing with my strawberry shake hydrangeas by Monrovia, you guys, I pruned those back vigorously as well. Now, when it comes to my standard hydrangeas, I have two here in the front, and they've been in containers, you guys, let's just go ahead and say a decade, because they've been here for quite some time, and I will have to actually go through photos to actually find out how long we've had these hydrangea standards in containers, but they have been here for so long. I started pruning those back. I noticed that they had some insect borer going through the wood, and that's something that is common to hydrangeas, especially the ones that have more of that woody growth. You will see when you start to prune them, the longer you have them on the property, or something is boring through the wood. So when you see that, what you want to do is you want to go in, you want to prune it all the way back to try to get as much of that damaged material out. And because I had to do that on actually both of these, the longer that you have hydrangeas, especially the ones with the woody growth on them, the more you will start to see the problems that hydrangeas have. And I went ahead and I gave them two full buckets of water because they have been quite some time without water. These containers have been here so long, they're not set up on drip. And actually, a lot of my containers actually have the wiring to be set up on drip. Something that I need to check off my list for this season. Because had I had everything set up on drip, the only thing I would have to be worrying about right now is my inventory. 
so now my fountain you guys is barely that's another thing when you're gone from your garden when you go on vacation if you don't have someone watching over your fountains your containers and god forbid you have any inventory even though i have some of my plants are sitting in like a small shallow pool of water those did okay but for my fountains all of those need to be filled up so i'm going to start with the one in the front know I should be shamed because I should have already had these pansies out but you guys they did not look this bad before we left to go to Buckhead or Atlanta to Georgia they did not look that bad but since we got hit with a heat wave you go ahead let's snatch these out and then we'll go ahead and put our summer annuals in this bed It does look pretty bad, but the only thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in and just cut these out. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to stick these in.
I want to go in and I want to prune out the sucker it says up underneath this crab apple tree. Guys, I love this crab apple tree. It gives the most luxurious show in the springtime. And of course, Penelope's in the background barking because she would rather be out here with the rest of us. She's with me all the time. She's my right hand. And we jokingly call her the supervisor over here on the channel. So let's go in and let's go ahead. Let's prune out these suckers. And you guys, I will be so satisfied with how it looks for right now. Let's go do it. We've got a lot done, but we're not finished. If you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead, click the subscription button. We'd love to have you join us. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Make sure you click that like button, honey. Yes.